So just what effect is cleaning this rifle bore going to have on the accuracy of this rifle? Well, that's what we're going to find out. On our first range trip with this Winchester Model 70 Featherweight, chambered in 257 Roberts, I fired a four-shot group with these 120-grain spear hot-core bullets, and I got a 4.35-inch shot group. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not good at all. So we started troubleshooting this rifle, found out there's a high spot up here where the wood was actually touching the barrel, so it wasn't free-floated as it should be, right at this front sling stud. And I sanded that down, opened up the barrel channel. We came back to the range on our second trip, fired the same bullet, same loading, and we got a 2.66 inch shot group. So that was a, an improvement. We brought, almost cut our shot group in half progress but we're still a long way from where we want to be for this project of getting this featherweight to shoot under one moa so we checked out the bore with the bore scope last time and there was a lot of copper fouling in here all right so i did a thorough cleaning on this bore and now we're going to shoot this rifle four shot group same load same bullet and see what we get with a pristine bore and then compare that to the groups we were getting previously. So let's get to shooting. And now we have a 1.875 inch shot group. So just cleaning the bore, pristine bore, getting rid of the fouling. We went from a 2.66 inch shot group to a 1.875. That was progress. But here's the thing. Generally, after a thorough cleaning like we just did on that 257 Roberts, we need to get some fouling shots through that barrel before it actually starts shooting its best. It needs to settle back in, get a little fouling in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some load testing. And keep in mind, I'm reloading, but for any of you, when you buy factory ammunition, you're buying a load. It's just the load that the factory determined to probably be the best for your rifle. Well, that's what I'm about to do now is to try different loads to see if I can find something that this rifle really likes because we have yet to do that. Right, we're doing that load testing. We're going to fire roughly 20 rounds, four different loads or five different loads. And we're going to build up the fouling. And when we're done, we're going to come back with the same load we just fired, that same 120 grain spear bullet. And we're going to fire another four shot group. And we're going to see what that rifle does with some fouling in that barrel. And I suspect it's going to be even better than this, or at least I'm hoping.
So just cleaning this bore, we went from a 2 inch 660 thousandths group to a 1 inch 850 thousandths group. We shaved almost an inch off of our group size cleaning the bore. And then our fouling shots, firing those 20 rounds or so while we were doing our load testing, building the fouling back up. That shaved almost another half of an inch off of our group size. We're at one inch 370 thousandths now. All right, that's progress. We're getting there. And honestly, when we started this project, I thought this was going to be pretty straightforward and simple. But now, I'm, yeah, we've had to do some stuff. We've shaved almost three inches off of our group size from where we're, we started on this project with our starting load. That's, yeah. And we haven't done anything drastic. We've just done the simple, basic things that you can run into with any rifle and are subject to run into with any rifle. I just wasn't expecting to run into all of them with this rifle. <laughs> but we're getting there. But I did want to make sure all of you understand my thoughts on bore cleaning, my philosophy. All right, because this is kind of important, especially for us hunters and what I've said before about there being so, many, so much confusion between the different types of shooting now. All right, bench rest shoes, shooters, F-class guys, the, the precision guys. All right, they want a pristine bore, absolutely spotless. But then they're going to build their loads to shoot in that pristine, spotless bore. Right, and they're going to clean that. After every session, they're going to clean that bore. Okay, and that works for them. That gives them the absolute greatest accuracy they can get. Because it's, it's consistent. And this is all about consistency. That's what accuracy is. But you got to remember, those guys are shooting a bunch of rounds in a session, and they change barrels like most of us change tires on our cars. Okay, now for hunting. Hunting's a, a completely separate discipline than bench rest shooting. It's not the same. I don't want to be like the bench rest guys. I'm not trying to be. I'm trying to be a hunter. Okay. And I still want accuracy though. All right. I want this barrel though to reach an equilibrium on the copper. Okay. So we cleaned this down to steel. Our group size got much smaller. We fired 20 shots through here and our group size is still getting smaller. Eventually, we're going to hit a point, we're going to reach an equilibrium in the fouling in this barrel, and our shot group sizes are going to be very, very consistent for however many rounds. Depends on the bore. It might be 30 rounds, it might be 200 rounds. It's just, okay, and then at some point, the copper in this bore is going to build up and there's going to be too much again, and then the groups are slowly going to start opening up. Well, that's when I want to come in and do a cleaning, but I'm not going to do a heavy cleaning like we just did. The heavy, heavy cleaning I did with the JB bore cleaner on this bore, I should never have to do that on this rifle again, ever. I should never have to use any kind of copper solvents or any of that stuff. Okay. When we hit that sweet spot and we're in that zone, where we've reached that equilibrium, which is where we want to keep our rifle. We want to keep it in that zone. Okay, so we get too much fouling. I want to come back in after that, and I want to remove just enough copper to get it back into that zone. And all I'm ever going to need to do on this rifle again is just take a brush on the cleaning rod. I can wrap a patch around the the brush, the bronze brush or not, put some um, Hoppies number nine on there, run it through there about 10 times or so, and then put a jag on here with the packs and some Hoppies and run those through till they come out clean and, and then follow up and run dry patches through till they come out clean and that's all I need to do. Hoppies will remove copper. It just doesn't remove much. It's a very mild cleaner. Well, that's all I want to do is just remove just a little bit. And that's going to be part of my routine maintenance for this rifle. And think about it, routine maintenance. 
during routine maintenance, we don't want to change anything. We want to maintain whatever it is we're doing routine maintenance on. All right, so when we wipe a rifle down, we're not trying to change anything. We're just trying to make sure it don't ever rust. We're trying to keep it as it is. Same way with a bore, routine cleaning, maintenance cleaning on your bore on the inside. If you've got a rifle that shoots great, you don't want to change that. You just want to maintain that. Okay, so that's all I'm trying to do with my cleaning. Now, if you want a spotless bore and be like the, you know, all the pe people showing all the bore scope pics of their spotless bores, that's fine. Uh, each and to their own, this is just what I'm after. I want to maintain that equilibrium and I want a routine cleaning program that's going to maintain what I've got when I get there. Okay, now if I want to clean it, in between then, all right? Right now, we did a lot of shooting. We've got a lot of loose carbon in here. Gum, black stuff. Okay, I can take a, a wire brush with some hoppies, run it through two or three times, and then some patches and get all the, the gunk out. But right now, I wouldn't do any more than that. And that would probably hurt my shot groups. Like I said, our shot groups are tightening right now because we're getting the fouling back. At the same time, I don't want it to ever get to where it was, though, with the fouling being so bad it's causing us serious accuracy problems. All right. So that's my thoughts on bore cleaning, for whatever that's worth. So where to next with the project? That's the question. All right. We've made significant progress. Like I said, well, we've shaved almost three inches off of our group size from where we started. That's pretty good. But we're still not quite there. And the guy I used to work with, he had a saying that really always stuck with me. Finish strong. Uh, well, we're, we're coming into the closing stretches of this project of, and our goal of getting it to shoot under one MOA. We're getting close. But we've gotten the low-hanging fruit now. The simple things like the barrel channel and, you know, cleaning the bowl. What's next? All right, and this is where I think patience comes in. I, I think the thing to do now is load up some more loads, go back to the range, do some more shooting, and just see what we get. And keep in mind, all that bore cleaning we did, it changes things. So loads that shot bad can start to shoot good. Loads that used to shoot good, they can start shooting bad. And that's why I say, if you, if you clean your bore right now, and some serious heavy cleaning on it, it might start shooting worse if you've got a load that the rifle always already shoots well. All right, so just there's a lot of changing dynamics here. But with all of those changes and things changing, I think that's where the patience comes in. Okay, I'm not convinced that this bore is broken in yet. I'm not convinced that it's where it needs to be yet because we still, we saw some pretty ugly groups out there with our load testing. But we were also start, starting to see some rays of sunshine there. <laughs> we had one group with using the 120 grain spear bullets and I used Ramshot Hunter powder in that group just as a sample just to try it and it was a four shot group and it's around one inch four hundred thousandths not great but the last three shots in that group were under half an inch that's the that is the closest thing i have seen to a clover leaf from this rifle yet All right. that's showing some potential so i'm thinking we go back and we shoot 120 grain spears and, and we do a ladder test with this ramshot hunter and see what we get. And I, I think this is where the patience is going to come in and I, I think this is where a lot of people mess up is just not having the patience to go out and just shoot the rifle long enough to know what it's going to do. Right, and we, we don't know what this one's going to do. It should keep tightening up. The only way to find out is go shoot. Now, unfortunately, ammo just being so expensive these days, it makes it a lot tougher. 
I know. And I'm going through a lot of components and powder and bullets and everything now doing the load testing on this rifle. That's how you get there. Some rifles you get lucky and you just carry them out and you just got the right load or right box of factory ammo and it just shoots great out of the gate. You can take another rifle from the same manufacturer made on the same day and <laughs> you got this. <laughs> a lot of luck involved in this stuff. But getting a rifle to shoot is not luck. All right, maybe you take one rifle and you change something and you get lucky once, but you do it long enough and you, to consistently be able to get any rifle to shoot, you're, you're past luck at that point. And we're going to get this one to shoot. We're not relying on luck, but we're going to need some patience. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's going to be our next step. We just go back to the range. We, we do that, our incremental testing with different charges, 120 grain spear and this ramshot hunter. And we see what we get. And I did notice what we, we were mid 2600s on our velocity for everything we tried out there. And I was a long ways from the max charges on those sample loads. All of those little sample loads I did, we had plenty of upside. I didn't want to be anywhere near the pressure limit without doing my incremental testing to get to the pressure limit or even anywhere near it. Okay, so there's a lot left there to try. And with any luck at all, this next trip, we could very easily maybe reach our accuracy goals of under one MOA for this rifle on the next trip. It could go the, net, the other direction. I mean, that's just where that patience comes in. And if it goes the other direction, then we just figure that out. And we keep going until we get there. All right, I think that covered it for where we're at on the project now and for what cleaning a bore can do for your accuracy. So. I'll get our rounds loaded up, we'll get back to the range, and then we'll see what we got next week. God bless, and have a great day.